So, uh, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to our uh, fr monthly free webinar. Uh, this month we have something special. We're not talking technically or uh, network or uh, design. We have something special. Uh, I thought uh, we have something like more like a mindset or uh, uh, methodology, which is agile. And uh, we have our uh, my friend. Uh, first of all, his friend. We used to work together in a very big company, uh, Orange Business Services, and also his a colleague, friend, and really expert in agile. So uh, before we start, I'll give you uh, in a couple of seconds a, a quick overview about Haysam. Uh, Haysam is a leading professional at Orange Business Services. Uh, I think he's working there for almost 15 years, right, Haysam, or more? Uh, yes, yes, Mohammed. It's uh, almost 15 years. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, great. Uh, Hassan is one of the first uh, persons in Arab world to get uh, Agile certificate. He delivered this Agile training in a lot of companies like uh, Valeo and OBS. Uh, he's one of the core team uh, in Orange responsible about Agile transformation. Uh, he's the first uh, in Asia to conduct the ACP program, uh, and he will tell us about this ACP. Uh, program and he also uh, a writer in uh, in magazine called Arab Pioneer and he is working in a project management uh, lecturer in this university in Egypt and he already was a, one of the main speakers in a lot of uh, summit and uh, career uh, summit in the, in the Middle East. So um, he also holds a, a lot of certificates when it comes to agile and uh, project management. Uh, PMI, Agile uh, Scrum Master, certified, and uh, and much more. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, thank uh, Haytham for his time, and he, we can start this uh, amazing journey about Agile uh, the methodology and mindset. All right, Mohammed. Um, so um, I'd like to thank you so much for. Uh, for being here, uh, um, for being with you today, and I'm very excited uh, to speak about a lot of topics that a lot of people um, want to know about and want to have more information. As you know, agile uh, as a buzzword has been used uh, for many times in many companies, and usually it's been used, and uh, we all we always hear that terms of agile transformation. So um, so let's do it, and uh, I'm sure it will be fun and uh, uh, in, uh, informative for everyone. Thanks. Yeah, great. So let's do it like a, more like a question and answer, and let's try to be interactive. Uh, so for us, most of us are coming from network engineering background. Uh, first of all, uh, what is agile? What does it mean, agile, and why? Why we need? Why we really? <laughs> To care about agile as a technical engineer. Uh, really to care really about agile and what is it agile? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I just uh, I just shared my screen, but I will start uh, answering uh, your question about uh, why agile and why it's been used so widely uh, lately in, in the past few years. Okay, if we if we look at the word agile, it means. Um, you know, it means uh, like flexibility. It means fast. It means um, uh, adaptable. So, why this term has been used so widely these days? We we first we have to confess that the 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 world technology and the um, uh, you know the, the IT the information technology. Um, everything around us has been uh, dramatically changing very fast at the last uh, at the last maybe 10 15 years okay so um, at, in the past we were using uh, some techniques and, and some specific approaches to deal with uh, with the uh, with the challenges to deal with the projects and that way of working in the past is not uh, what we should use now um, with all with the all uh, emerging technologies and uh, and businesses and the fast growing uh, information technology so uh, we we can say that uh, we started to think more agile in order to absorb all the challenges that we have now 
which which wasn't the case in the past. So let me uh, let me first um, in order to to know the difference between the past and now and why we need agile now. In the past, the the you know that uh, the technology is not as it is now uh, at all. So the nature of the projects was not having that. Uh, demanding changes and demanding challenges every day. Um, what what has been done in the past between uh, the the service provider and the customer <clears throat> is that the service provider, uh, when when there is a project between uh, the customer and the service provider, the customer should uh, uh, should advise the service provider with all clear requirements about what we should do and uh, how we have to do this so the requirements are so clear for the for the service providers and uh, there is no expected big changes that would happen because of the nature of the project the nature of the business uh, at that time uh, so um, it was it was we can we can tell that it was kind of static uh, it's not uh, it's not changing so we know exactly what the customer wants and we can start collecting all the requirements from the customer then we can go ahead with the planning phase then the execution the money controlling and uh, after that the closing the problem start to happen uh, when the technology has been an essential part in all of our projects and because the the, the huge changes that uh, the business demanding and also the customer now uh, the, the nature of the customers now is not like like past the customers now are expecting the service providers to be more flexible to be uh, to be more uh, accepting the change uh, uh, to to, uh, to to be more into like a partnership between the customer and they want that kind of, of flexibility from the service providers. So in order to uh, deliver the highest value to the customer, we have to change the way we are working. So it's not only about collecting all the requirements that we need in the beginning and start working on that uh, until the end. Because what happened uh, using that um, old approach uh, is that after we develop the whole uh, product for the customer, all the whole service. Uh, when we provide this service to the customer at the end, the customer simply says that this is not what I I have expected. This is not what I I really want. So there is a huge gap between what the customer really wants and what the development team or the project management team understood from the customer. There is a huge gap, and we need to narrow this gap. We need to do more collaborative approach. We need to be more engaged with the customer. Uh, we need to uh, not only deliver a big thing at the end. We need to deliver like small chunks of of products, uh, you know, uh, throughout the project to make sure that this is what the customer really wants, and this is what the customer uh, expected, and this is the value that uh, that expected from the customer. Uh, so, in a nutshell, uh, agile is now being uh, developed as as a mindset, as an approach, in order to absorb all the challenges that we face now with the emerging market, with the with the with the with the fast growing technology technologies and fast growing uh, fast growing development in all the technologies and industries great thank, thank you Hassan, for that so does this mean that uh, also i want to make sure that nobody expects it is agile only a project management tool so is it something like uh, mm. we used to have this waterfall which we do yeah. everything in sequence and uh, the agile is just a way to make it uh, more dynamic uh, yeah. more like sprints or, yeah. as you, or, or as you finish your sentence, I want to stress on that. It's more like a mindset or a methodology. Okay. Okay, okay. That's, that's a very good good question. And there is a, a huge misconception in, in, that, uh, in that subject. Actually, um, many people think that Agile is just a way of working or Agile is just uh, something that we need uh, to um, to deliver uh, product fast uh, faster and or to um, to deliver the right product and that's it. So um, let me let me just uh, stress on something that agile uh, essentially it's a mindset. Uh, 
It's a mindset of adaptation. It's a mindset of flexibility. It's a mindset of ab ab uh, absorbing the challenges and changes. It's a mindset of welcoming the changes. It's a mindset of collaboration with the customer. It's a mindset of uh, it's a mindset of um, giving more focus into the individual and interactions. Okay. So in this in this particular part, let me uh, let me. Uh, Show you one of the uh, of the most important uh, slides um, that um, I want to show uh, you this today. So, if we if we're speaking about adaptability, flexibility, collaboration, before the agile is being used as a business term, was that existing already? There is no people on earth since the <laughs> since the people existing. It, there is no agile mindset. Uh, in fact, there is a agile mindset even uh, in the old ages because eventually it's a mindset uh, there is there is some very uh, good comparison between the fixed mindset and, and, and the growth mindset this is created by dr carl dweck she is uh, she is a, a, a social and psychological uh, scientist. She wrote that book called Mindset. Uh, actually, she, she has nothing to do with the Agile. She just, uh, you know, um, made a comparison between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. She said that uh, each one of us has a, a, a specific percentage of the fixed mindset or uh, the growth mindset. So some people have growth mindset more than the fixed mindset and vice versa. So let's just quickly uh, look at the, the difference between the growth, mi uh, growth mindset and fixed mindset. So the growth mindset, he thinks that, he believes that intelligence, personality, character can be continuously developed and the true potential is unknown and unknowable, which means that I have a lot of potentials that I may not discover yet. And I have a lot of potential that I may die without discovering it. So people has a lot of potentials. People has a lot of skills. But we may live our life without discovering maybe uh, 30, 40 percent of these skills. So this guy of skills and potentials that he might not discover. So what he do actually is he desire continuous learning because he wants to discover more uh, innovations. He wants to discover more information. He wants to discover uh, more challenges. So he confronts uncertainties. He doesn't fear change. He doesn't fear uh, uncertainties. Embracing challenge as well, not afraid to fail. So he wants to, to do uh, stuff that he never done before that's because he, he he's not afraid to fail because this is not a failure this is just uh, you know uh, it's a continuous learning even if you fail in something you will get a lot of lessons learned he also put a lot of effort to learn and the feedback he he received the feedback in a very positive way because the feedback is in current capabilities it it's not judging it it, it doesn't mean that I'm good or bad uh, on the other side, there is a fixed mindset, which is uh, someone who believes that the intelligence, personality, and character is inherent and static lockdown or fixed. My potential is determined at birth. It does not change. And we can see a lot of people have this fixed mindset. They thought that they were burned with some skills and they will not grow or develop uh, at all. So God created us. Uh, just different and we have so just a certain skills and we cannot develop our skills so this is uh, the fixed mindset that in, in you know in riddle to this he avoid failure he desires to look smart avoid challenges stick to what he what he knows I just don't want to do anything new because I don't want to uh, to, to, to seem or to look not smart and when you <clears throat> when you give him some feedback or criticism, he's taking this very personally. So um, so this guy is it, you know it's very stubborn, it's very fixed, and he uh, he doesn't want to make any change. He doesn't want himself uh, to change. <clears throat> so the agile mind. <laughs> so the agile no problem. The agile mindset has been. Uh, inspired by this book, The Growth Mindset. And we can tell, uh, so if I ask you, Muhammad, so do we expect that all of us should be a growth mindset 100% or if there is some uh, percentage 
that should be a fixed mindset? What do you think? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I'll tell you no. Uh, so I believe that we will have a mix. My hundred percent growth mindset uh, is not real. Uh, My yeah. Opinion. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, the the growth the growth mindset to to be hundred percent growth mindset, this is not um, you know this is not the best thing because yep. you need you need you need actually some uh, fixed mindset uh, for for something like the, your values, your religious beliefs, your uh, uh, you, you know something like faith, uh, honesty. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, and so on. So these things you cannot tolerate. You cannot just. Uh, sometimes you lie and sometimes you don't. So this is not. Uh, this is not recommended. But we do believe that we need to have a, a growth mindset in much more percentage than uh, the fixed mindset. Yeah. So, so that's really interesting. Uh, as I said, many people they said. That it's not actually a fail because fail is actually it should stand for first attempt in learning. So it's not a failure. It's just your first attempt, and yeah. second and third attempt will be uh, much much better. Even for yeah. people know this that for uh, elite and difficult certificates like CCIE, uh, very maybe less than 20% of people can uh, success uh, from the first time. So that's why it's always uh, an attempt to change. Uh, so my next question is, let's say uh, people always usually develop, and uh, if a person was maybe for his 30 or 35 years was working as a, a fixed mindset and he was resisting change, how easy to uh, switch him from this fixed mindset to try to adapt the growth mindset or the more agile mindset? Is that yeah. possible? Or yeah, let, let, let me tell you, Muhammad is that one of the biggest challenges in, in, the, in the way of transfer, transforming the organizations to agile. Because you're not only transforming the way you are, they are working, you are transforming the mindset, the culture. So it's, it's a big challenge, and we have to confess. And it's not easy to make that full transformation. And, um, but you, you, you have to believe that reaching that agile transformation uh, and, and being agile in culture, in mindset, at this point, you will, you will realize a huge uh, value and you will realize a huge opportunities because, uh, because of this mindset. So it's not easy, but it's doable. So what, what we need to do with some people that they are very fixed or, or very uh, stubborn rigid. mindset mm -hmm. or rigid mindset. Mm -hmm. So what we do actually is that uh, we start with the people that are uh, agile or the people that are um, you know, flexible. So we inspire that rigid fixed mindset people with the successes and uh, the, the the impact, the significant impact, which is um, which is being uh, caused by uh, transforming to agile uh, from the people that they are uh, more flexible. So the the transformation cannot be so forced. You cannot force people to change their way of working or to change the uh, they, their mindset, you need to inspire them to do this. So mm. to inspire them, you need to show them a lot of success stories, even within the organizations. So, for example, at OBS, when I, when I, when I face such a situation, I start with the people that, uh, that can give me some quick wins. Okay, and after that, these people who are fixed mindset, they try, they try to, um, you know, they, they are very pragmatic actually. So they try to just do like the people that uh, that has been praised for being agile, and and um, and you know, the, the they are inspired uh, by so uh, by the other people. So what I'm trying to do is to inspire the the, the fixed. Grow, uh, the fixed mindset people with the successes of the uh, growth mindset people. Good. So, so I have another uh, uh, question, and uh, I believe some people will maybe think that agile is only for the software development. Uh, maybe it started there, or maybe because they consider these projects are more flexible, uh, not like our the network project. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people they believe that maybe software because it includes modules 
So mm-hmm. I can start working on this module. If the customer uh, asks for something uh, something else, I can change to this module, add to it, introduce a new module. So is it is it true that uh, Agile is only for software development uh, project, or we can apply it to other projects? Uh, okay, uh, let's let just um, if we can uh, go back for 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 some a few years back. Uh, actually, agile is being um, it, it's it's an approach or it's being thought as a mindset and approach from the software development. Okay, mm-hmm. so that that will that will take me to the uh, agile uh, manifesto, and agile manifesto has been. Uh, created by a group of software development uh, leaders uh, who decide that we need to change our mindset, we need to change our practices, the values and principles in order to uh, to, to to deliver value to the customer, to uh, to face the challenges that we have with the changing requirements. So initially, it was. Uh, it was for the software uh, development, or it was inspired by the software development industry. But let me let me tell you that more, later on, a lot of industries has uh, uh, you know gave more thought about why we don't use that values and principles of agile since it's being successful and huge successful for the software devel- development industry. Why we don't start to use these values and principles and be, be also our values and principles. So if we look for the values and principles, we can, we can see our, our first value, and, uh, value, it's individual interactions over processes and tools. So we can, we can feel that this is a real value that can be applied anywhere. Okay, so when you're speaking that we need to give more focus on the individual and interactions, people should speak, sh- people should meet, and instead of just sending emails or instead of just um, log, log a ticket or, or something, we need to interact to make the best understanding of, for, for each other. So this is one of the values that I do believe that it's very um, it, it's it's a it's a very good value even for for any industry. We're not speaking about only, or it's not just applicable for the for the uh, software development. Um, if you go to the <clears throat> to the second value, the working solution over comprehensive documentations. That means that the, the, the customer will not realize any value from the, the, the a lot of paperwork that we uh, start doing in the first. Uh, um, in the first phase of the project, <clears throat> we may uh, and and sometimes actually this this happen uh, in my company. They they may start doing a lot of paperwork, a lot of designs, a lot of 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 uh, you know testing uh, scenarios in order to do this at the end. But what they discovered is that maybe a lot of what they have write, uh, what they have written. It's not applicable uh, when we go through the project because a lot of changes came up from the customer, from the industry, from a technology. So we will not stick. We cannot stick to this huge paperwork design plan. It doesn't make any sense. So this value speaks about whenever you have something to implement. Just go ahead and implement it, okay? You can uh, divide your work as sprints, and we will speak about this. So you can de- you can divide your, your project in short sprints, and in each sprint, try to do something and try to deliver value to your customer, to try to 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 uh, to produce something that uh, that is working for the customer. Yes, I have an uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes. I have an yes. example here. And usually, people like they say usually you learn from your uh, failures or your mistakes uh, more than you learn from your success, or as much as you learn from your success. So remember, in old days, I, I believe documentation is good, but right document. So if you put a design, for sure you need a high level design or low level design. Exactly. Yeah. But some yeah. other documents are really a waste of time, and as you said, the customer will not see a value. I remember a long time back, we have a very huge project. And because it was using the old mentality and the old way of working, uh, we spent around two months only to create a document called uh, due diligence. This document is just to telling the customer what are the questions we thought about, and 
this customers, these are our expected answers, or and or this is what we got. So if you have something additional question or something, so yeah, it was maybe it was good as a lesson learned, but not as at the beginning of the project, wasting all a big team time and the customer time. Maybe the customer gets frustrated of building such a document. So maybe this is yeah. an example of some of the documents yeah. which is doesn't work. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, uh, Muhammad, for sharing this. And here we're not speaking about, uh, you know, not using any documentation. This is not. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So what we what we're speaking about is doing the barely sufficient documents. You do yeah. the minimum documents that did, would bring a real value to the customer. Any other document that you're doing and it will not bring value, it's a waste of time and resources. And we can make use of. of this huge time in some other useful activities. So we, we, we want to deliver value to the customer with the minimum, uh, barely sufficient documents that the customer will realize value from these documents. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, so uh, we, have, we have two more values. Uh, the third one is the customer collaboration over contract negotiations. That this is also, uh, you know, a, a very, uh, important value. We're speaking about br delivering value to the customer. So how can we just be sticked to a specific contract? And this contract will not uh, change until the end. Maybe the customer uh, want to change s something in the contract. Maybe uh, the people who are developing the product uh, need need more um, collaboration with the customer to, to confirm that they are on the right track. So uh, what happens here if we don't collaborate with the customer is that we will deliver uh, a product according to the contract, but it will not be the right product to the customer because it might, it might not uh, deliver the same value that the customer expected. So here we need to uh, just don't lock ourselves or lock down the, 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 the relationship between the buyer and the seller into just a, a paper of contract, we need to collaborate more with the customer, collaborate more with the, with, the, with the service provider, both can collaborate, so they make sure that they are delivering the customer. It, it doesn't, it, you know, it, the project is not about contract, Muhammad. The project is about delivering value, even if the final value reached is completely different from the contract. Okay, and okay, how we can do the pay payment terms, uh, that's another topic that, uh, that we can speak about, uh, about it for, for, uh, for many hours, actually. Yeah, but, but actually, this, we should have this mindset. Yeah, let me comment here because I believe this value is uh, okay, sure. maybe, yeah, maybe it's a bit, uh, I think it's challenging because uh, when it comes to big project and big company, they have a huge legal team. Uh, and I thought myself, usually a technical team will find a solution if you're working with a customer or a partner. Maybe you will find a solution in a few days or we mean fast, but when it comes to legal people, uh, they have this very rigid mentality. They need to follow this uh, uh, very specific uh, terms and condition. Even one word, they can spend hours in negotiating. No, I need to add this word and other, and the customer That's legal exactly. team may say, so, I mean, how to reach this uh, right balance? Because if the contract is already signed and fixed, how you will be able to us to convince the legal teams in these two com companies to to change or to be agile? I think it's something. Yeah. Did yeah. you face something like that in real life? And how you was able to uh, work with yeah, these teams to make them? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Let me let me tell you that uh, this is uh, also a big challenge. Um, that's why that's why in agile contracts we tend to state very clearly, explicitly that we are working in an agile mood or in an agile approach. Even you know, Muhammad, that even the RFPs. The request for proposals that we send to the service providers, we state clearly that we want to do this agile. We want to work in an agile approach. So in order to, to, to minimize the challenges, you cannot as a service provider to be agile while the customer is not agile, while your vendor is not mm -hmm. agile, or while, while you didn't agree on the specific approach that we are going to use. So first, 
<clears throat> first, you have to make sure that the customer understand the agile uh, values and principles and the mindset and he knows the approach as well okay after that if he really knows the approach that will make it very easy for you and him to proceed with a contract uh, let's say that it will be uh, a contract with high, with high uh, possibilities of, uh, of of making changes of flexibility so mm. it will throughout the customer uh, collaboration uh, with both of you and even if Muhammad if you are as a service provider want to deliver uh, a product or a service in an agile way and the customer has no um, information about agile he doesn't uh, he, he doesn't know the value of the agile principles I want to tell you that this is part of my job as an agile coach as an agile leader is to do some uh, you know some some awareness sessions for the customer and it might be sometimes like two days workshop at the customer side to speak about uh, value proposition to speak about the the agile mindset the values the principles to make the customer on the same page with us to make the customer sure to make the customer 100% comfortable that we are going to use a very uh, effective and productive uh, approach and we will deliver value for both of us. So first you need uh, both of you as a service provider, customer, vendor, all of us should have the same mindset in order to minimize that big challenges with the contract. Great, great. Thank you, Aitam. So, uh, really like, uh, so it's more like a, a, a culture, it's more like a mindset uh, paradigm shifting that you're trying to have this uh, culture uh, enforced into your uh, into your company and also into the customer and vendor and as you mentioned you can try uh, with a quick win so maybe you try with a team which already have some flexibility and this this culture will expand by nature when other teams see the success uh, with an example software team with IT team with the network team yeah. Then maybe the legal and HR will start also adapt to this agile yeah. mindset and agile value. So, thank yes, you. yes, yes, yes. This is correct. And and the most important thing, uh, Muhammad, is that you cannot just uh, transform uh, the IT team to agile without uh, without the support from the management. Yes. So uh, supporting from the management is the you know. Mm. Is, is is basics yeah. yeah after that if other teams want to transform they can they will be inspired by the success of, of the other teams mm -hmm. okay. okay all right yes the last value <laughs> <laughs> yes, the last value. Yes, sorry, I yeah. <laughs> I was expecting a question, but no, anyway, no, no. all right. <laughs> okay, Mohammed. So uh, the last value is responding to change over following a plan, and this really makes sense um, because we are we want to deliver value. So sometimes the customer have a plan and it changed. So we need to respond to change, even late in the development. You know, Mohammed, that uh, let me let me give you w one of the cases that I have been uh, through. Um, I was I was I was I was managing a project. Uh, actually, you know, in Orange Vista Services, we provide network projects, uh, voice security, and uh, voice over IP, and so on. So the customer uh, wanted to uh, to to deliver uh, a voice. Uh, uh, site uh, for 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 uh, for one of the sites that the customer wants, and so in order to uh, build up a site from scratch, we need routers, switches, uh, lease lines, uh, call managers, a mm. lot of configurations to to be done. So at the day of the implementation, the customer decided to make a huge change on the scope. He 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 want to change the platform. He doesn't want to use. Uh, the 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 um, uh, one one of the platforms he want to uh, replace it by other vendor. Other vendor so yeah. this is a new, yes, this is that's because he realized that the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the platform that he's going to uh, to use will not bring the best value to him and he want to change it. So what we have done. Is that after and and this is actually after I sent uh, the field engineer on site. So w when this happened, simply I, I I start to think about what if we just move ahead 
with the plan and implement what the customer doesn't want now. What would be the impact? I saw, I, I saw that the impact will be huge in, in, in terms of customer satisfaction, customer value. But what if we cancel this migration and started to think about delivering the right product that, that, that the customer really wants? And, and don't worry about the, 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 uh, you know, uh, the increased cost that, or the increase of cost because the customer know that he will have some um, excessive cost because of this big change and he will accept it. So I will respond to the change and I will also measure the impact that the customer will, will have and we will pay, the customer will pay it for this um, for this working effort that we will do, so it's it's a matter of a mindset, Mohammed. It's mm -hmm. why don't you why don't you make the change? Why don't you respond quickly to the change? Because okay, the customer will 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 have to uh, to realize that impact, and he will pay you extra money. So why don't you just make the change? This is what the customer wants. He pays for the service, and we want to deliver value. So it's mm -hmm. it's a very simple. Concept. Yes, yes, because some people maybe tend to, when they receive the change, the first impression they are trying to reject the change. Maybe this is a good nature for most of the people. They actually already, I was almost 90% there, so why I need to repeat all the work done? So some people by by nature, they rejecting the change. But if you try to consider this change, not something like an, a switch in plan, consider it like a new opportunity and maybe uh, build something new and try to because you are your as you mentioned your end goal is customer satisfaction that you want the customer if you if you insist to follow the plan the plan is not written in stone or it's not a holy yeah. uh, document it yeah. can be changed and the end goal if you force if you stick to the plan maybe the customer will not use your service and after a few uh, months he will just switch to another provider or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Believe me, believe me, Muhammad. If you if you didn't do this, someone else will do. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah, is, this is this is this is the business. If you didn't do this, someone else will do. So do you want to do this and realize the value, or make yeah. someone else to realize this value? So it's simple. Yeah. yeah. But something in the back of my mind, the architect in, in the back of my mind, <laughs> <laughs> away from this one, is thinking maybe there is an architect mistake here. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, he should realize that actually, if we consider, remember, guys, if we talk about scalability and usability, yeah. maybe he didn't do the, his homework correctly to the to understand yeah. that actually we should go with vendor B, not vendor A from day one. Maybe that <laughs> something not related to agile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and, and you know, you know, you know, Muhammad, agility is start is start as a mindset. It start mm -hmm. with with everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I cannot I cannot be agile as a as a project manager and I have like an architect or or a, 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 an engineer a implementation mm -hmm. engineer who who are not uh, not agile. So it impacts all of us. If you want yeah. really to 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 be successful, we need to change uh, the way we are thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that that will that will take me also, Muhammad, to, to a very important topic. And actually, it's a huge misconception in agile. Agile doesn't mean that I have to force the agile development uh, stages in all of my projects. That would, will, would actually take me to that slide. Uh, if we're speaking about waterfall and agile, are these two contradicting uh, mindsets or these can be integrated in a way or another? What do you think, mm -hmm. Muhammad? I think they can be integrated. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the waterfall will be thrown out the window. Because if you if you look at the the okay, one of the biggest certificates in the project management uh, using the waterfall approach that's the PMP. Okay, the project management professional. Mm -hmm. If you see that in the in the previous edition, in the sixth edition of the waterfall, what happened is that they in started to put the agile concept in all knowledge areas. They started to speak about how to adopt agile in scope management, in cost management, in schedule management.
management, communication, stakeholders, procurement, uh, risk, uh, everything, quality. So uh, now this this should be integrated. You know, you know, Muhammad, that the, the the highest highest level of maturity in agile is the is is the you know that mindset of selecting the best approach which fits the best. That means that sometimes, sometimes, I feel that no, I I will not be able to 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 do to do this uh, in agile development. I will not be able to do this in uh, sprints. I will not be able to deliver working product after each sprint for this specific product. That's why I will have to deliver in a waterfall mood. But how can I? What do you think, Mohammed? How can I integrate an agile mindset? in a waterfall approach or a waterfall project. Yeah. How do you think? Maybe yeah, maybe you can consider the inside each step of the waterfall, you can do it in agile. As example, when you start designing, you can do the designing in small chunks and start working on, on parallel. And then also consider the implementation and migration. So even if it looks like a waterfall, if for a big project, as example, if we have a network project which takes two years, it will be something like uh, a high level waterfall project. I will do it like that. But inside each phase, I have very uh, sprints, many sprints running in parallel to achieve this. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally uh, agree with you, and it has a lot of uh, practices. It, it, it's uh, you know, you can apply a, the agile mindset with the waterfall with many different uh, shapes. Uh, but let me tell you also that it's not about only uh, doing the sprints or doing the uh, or, or or for example, as as you mentioned, is doing the design in small sprints. There is something bigger that we have to realize the values of Agile, the mindset. Yes. It means that we need to collaborate. We need to um, to make regular checks with the customer to make sure that we are on on the right track. We need uh, to uh, to do more face-to-face -face communications to deliver the best message or to deliver the, the right message to each other. We need to, to foster more uh, collaborative approach between all of us. We need to use more uh, visualized tools like like the, the, the Kanban board. Um, if, if some people doesn't know the, the Kanban board, it's, it's like, um, uh, you know, a, a board that shows the processes from the to-do list, the, the, the doing, uh, the done, or the completed. So we need uh, to use some more visualized tool uh, why we use the, we're using this to gain the buy-in from the from the the team to to make everyone aware about what's happening in this project to help each other to work as one unit or one team. So this is the mindset. We c you can apply this mindset even in a pure waterfall project. Mm -hmm. there, there is no contradiction between uh, each of other. So there is no fight <laughs> between the waterfall or the, the other. There is no conflict. They can be both integrated in a hybrid uh, approach. So that will bring me uh, to the, if, if you want, as a project manager or even even as a technical expert, as, as a human being, if you want to have a, a, a very good mindset of dealing with all kinds of business, with dealing with all kinds of, uh, you know, um, uh, projects, uh, in industries, you need to realize both mindsets. You need to realize the, the, the waterfall, you need to understand the waterfall, and you need also to understand the agile. That's why anyone who has both knowledges, anyone who, who, who knows or he has some of these certificates or he has, uh, even if he doesn't have the certificate, but he has the knowledge. If he has a waterfall knowledge and the agile knowledge, I believe he would be a super hero in the uh, in in terms of the business and how we think and where we're going. Yeah, I agree, Hassan. Uh, maybe I, I give something from my real experience. Uh, I started uh, as an architect. Maybe I'm a bit old guy. I started in. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? Uh, Haitham, can, can you hear me and other people? I can hear, yes. I can hear yeah, Muhammad. Some people did. Yeah, some people mentioned, Ahmed mentioned that I'm on mute, maybe, yeah. So when I started as an architect, this was in the year 2006, long time back. 
Uh, and because I, I was moving from a pure technical implementation engineer to an architect role, the company decided that I need to uh, learn, in addition to some technical courses, I need to start learning uh, PMP at that time. It was PMP. Uh, maybe I, I was resistant, uh, resisting this a bit because I was working on my CCIE, <laughs> but I found out actually that PMP was very useful because as an architect, I deal with a lot of stakeholders, I deal, I deal with the customer, I need to understand what does it mean, a scope, what is the chart, what, uh, how to do the time management, how to estimate uh, the effort and uh, resources and all that. So. Uh, it's really beneficial for me as an architect to understand the PMP, the, the terminologies, the values, and, and so on. And also in uh, coordination with this, also Agile, I believe it would be very useful for us, uh, even more yeah. Yeah. technical. Yeah, yes, Mohammed. I I do I do I do uh, believe in what you're saying, and and this is this is actually the misconception that some people have. Some people think that uh, because we're moving to agile uh, mindset and and it's it's now a buzzword that is being um, used in in many uh, industries. So we have Mohammed. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, maybe there is there is some issues with uh, some users. Um, okay, but, but it's recorded. The session is recorded anyway, so the, we can get yes. back to. The, uh, we can hear you. Yes, that's very good. Yes. Thank you. Ari. Yeah, All go right. ahead, Zahid. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so, Muhammad, that's the misconception. So, some people that are really, uh, you know, in fond of of the agile mindset, they think that we have to apply it in everything. Okay, we have to. Uh, to do it in everything uh, we, we we will not uh, you don't have to um, you know to 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 know what is a fall for you to have uh, to, to get more info you don't have to study to learn. i think we lost you again in the last 20 seconds Hatton? I'm surprised, Mohammed, and this is actually okay, Mohammed. No, now we'll... so uh, let me. Uh, uh, I believe what you mentioned about uh, the agile, uh, value and agile mentality was a perfect answer. Uh, is this agile only for software projects? So I believe after all you mentioned in the last 15 minutes, really clarify that, uh, make it clear that we can use this mindset and values and uh, methodology in anything, not even in, in network project, in a lot of things in life. At, uh, 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 so, Muhammad? Yeah. Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I, I was summarizing to people uh, uh, that uh, what you mentioned in the last few minutes about agile value and mindset yeah. uh, really uh, answer very clearly and Effectively, the question is agile for software development or not. So, as you mentioned, yeah. with all this value, we can use it for any project. We can use it also for our life, for planning, uh, and so on. So, yeah. maybe because we are running yeah. uh, out of time, I have uh, uh, two questions, uh, and then I will uh, give you some terms. And in each one of them, in uh, uh, less than a minute, you need to tell me how this. Uh, uh, correlated or integrated with the other. So the okay. two questions. I have, have a question uh, also, Mohammed. Yeah. Yeah. So I will I'll try to finish myself and I will try to finish in 15 minutes and we'll leave another 15 minutes for all of you to ask a question. Is it fair game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great. So uh, uh, the two questions quickly, uh, uh, a lot of us coming from a network background, we know that uh, there's a lot of changes in the network, something like software defined network, uh, something like network virtualization, cloud, and so on. Uh, these things, trying these new technologies, trying to make the network more flexible, uh, trying to be very fast in time to market, uh, uh, instead of waiting for a hardware or vendor lock in, trying to do a lot of stuff in virtualization, uh, spinning a new VM, and so on. So I believe these technologies will make it easier to make the network project more agile. Do you agree on that, or do you see something? Uh, 
Absolutely, absolutely, Muhammad. I believe that. I believe that uh, Cisco Cisco was smart enough to to bring out that is the uh, is the end the software um, uh, the software design I I believe define the network uh, yeah mm -hmm. I I can tell that it's clearly uh, emphasize and confirm what I'm saying or and what we are uh, speaking about during this session so even Cisco uh, tried to adapt to this huge change uh, to, to the market, uh, they, they tried to, uh, to minimize the risk of delivering a hardwares uh, of the, the, the huge problems, the huge challenges that we may save w face with the hardwares on site. So now they want to make it very easy for the customers to use virtual uh, machines, to use um, a virtual uh, network uh, solutions. So it's, it's on software. And and it's there, there is nothing more easy than just uh, doing uh, your your work on a software. Okay, mm -hmm. it's much easier than or or if we can uh, speak about in terms of implementation. So mm -hmm. implementation, it's just a software, a username and a password, and bingo, you are in. You have your virtual uh, telephone. You have your uh, your virtual network uh, device. Everything is virtual. Everything on machine. You don't you don't don't need data, big data centers or big core network places to carry uh, all the, the network or the hardware devices that you want. You will save cost, you will save money, you will deliver uh, faster, you will deliver value to the customer in a in a huge uh, uh, a huge value will be delivered to the customer by uh, minimizing this huge risk of the uh, of the old uh, you know uh, usual uh, networks uh, or, or or i mean solutions that has yes. all the networks. so uh, so i completely agree with you muhammad on this and this is very uh, very good thing uh, that a lot of technology uh, companies are are think about this way great yes so that's why uh, even this is the only started in the universities stanford and people trying to uh, because some software engineers, they believe that we are, as a network engineer, are more rigid and very slow sometimes to provide uh, the requirement to them. So they, they tried, came up with this SDN and tried to move all the intelligence and control from the network devices. This was a pure or a, a Nirvana SDN. And then they discovered that this actually will not work. And a big player like Cisco, Juniper, and Huawei, they start in, imposing the hyper at the end, keeping some intelligence between the mm. controllers and the network devices. and But at least now the network devices are more programmable. It has like an API application uh, interfaces that you can interact with the with the network in a, as you mentioned, in easier and much faster way. Mm. Uh, yeah. it, let me tell you some terms and tell me, because some people may be confused. Uh, if we consider uh, agile and lean, lean, are they, are they the same? Are they different? Is, is it subset of each other? Or how we can compare Agile to Lean? Okay, okay. Uh, let's let's speak about Lean. Actually, Lean thinking, it's from from its name, it's a Lean thinking. It's it's more into also a mindset, and the Lean thinking has been um, has been discovered or has been uh, turned into. Uh, uh, you know, a business term that was uh, actually um, in you know uh, maybe in the in the 60s, uh, and it came from uh, Toyota production system. Uh, the lean mm. uh, the lean produced something called kanban, okay? Mm. And the kanban mm. it's a Japanese term uh, which is um, uh, discovered by the Toyota production system. Um, the Toyota. Uh, of course, the 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 big the big manufacturing uh, vehicle company uh, they use the lean thinking and the Kanban in order to minimize the waste, mm. uh, in order to make the workflow uh, very smooth. Uh, to 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 um, to avoid uh, you know repetitive a repetitive process to avoid extra process to avoid waiting times. So the lean thinking is about, is about minimizing waste. So the lean we can we can tell that the lean is the uh, the the mother mindset and uh, the 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 agile is 
coming from uh, the lean mindset. So, um, so, so the the lean is is much older than the the agile. But it at the eventually the agile also it's about removing waste. But it was formulated on uh, four values and twelve principles according to what ha what happened uh, in the agile manifesto. Great, great thank you. So uh, second tier actually it's in your drawing as well. Uh, Scrum. Uh, how agile is related to Scrum? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Scrum is simply uh, it's a doing agile. It's the technique, the framework. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the practices. So we need uh, Muhammad to differentiate between being agile and doing agile. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think, Muhammad? Uh, let me ask you this question: um, If you want to start building up your knowledge, uh, how how would you start? The, doing this are you going to start with building up the mindset the principles the values or just you're going to go ahead and learn how to develop your project using scrum so what do you think uh, actually maybe this is my way i'm not sure this is the right way or not usually I, I work on the value and principle and this value and principle after doing it multiple times it's become a habit so for me i start with adapting the principle believing this principle and then put it in a plan and then start doing it. Yeah, exactly, Muhammad, exactly. We have to be agile first before doing agile. And this is what, this is the big mistake that a lot of companies do in their uh, agile transformation journey. They just give a scrum training to the people without speaking about the agile mindset, without speaking about the, values, the principles. So the people started, started to use the scrum framework and you know, uh, in the Scrum framework, there is something called daily stand-up meetings, which is a 15-minute stand-up meeting that we do just to track the progress of the uh, of the project. Uh, so some people, because they didn't realize that value of the Scrum meetings, sometimes they get very uh, annoyed and they get they get very disengaged from the from the team and from the the project because they think that this daily stand-up meeting. Is, is useless and we can just uh, yeah yeah it's a waste of time it's like a punishment at the beginning of the day so so some people think that uh, because they didn't realize the value if you do believe in the values and principles of the agile you will you will be certain and you will realize the value of the daily meeting. actually the daily startup meetings is very important uh, something that we need to do and it's just a 15 minutes it's you know it should minimize it should not waste our time it's just a 15 minutes to make sure that we are on track so mm -hmm. if if we do realize that value we will accept doing it so mm -hmm. uh, the best thing to do Muhammad is to start building up your mindset as you mentioned mm -hmm. after that you can learn how to apply the practices and the framework um, mm -hmm. Whether it's a Scrum, Kanban, Safe, XP, there are a lot of frameworks and practices in Agile. Great, great. Uh, so for me, I have two other terms. Uh, it's the, uh, also, uh, how we can link uh, Agile to MVP, which is Minimum Viable Product? Yeah. Is there a link between the two? Yeah, actually, uh, the MVP is one of the, the most important concepts in the delivering value. MVP, it means it stands for minimal viable product, and it has another term of minimal marketable features, and it means that it's the basic set of functionalities that I can deliver to the customer so he can start gain ROI or return mm -hmm. on investment. So what we do aim in the agile uh, uh, production or in in the agile development uh, life cycle is we we can try as possible to deliver that MVP at, at the very early stages on the projects, like in the first sprint. See, so we want we want to to by end of, the, of of the first sprint, we want the customer to have the basic set of functionality. So. We can start using the service, and he's, he can start if 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 we're de if we're delivering like a software or or a web application, he can start going live, and with with the with the very basic features that like the login name, the password, and so on. So this is the, the the MVP. The MVP it's about delivering the 
the, the very basic set of functionalities at the first print, at the very early stages of, of the project, so the customer can realize value and gain return on investment. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Usually, even sometimes uh, adapting this, uh, when we start working on some ideas, we said, let's try to consider the main pain point uh, or the main problem of this customer and try to deliver it as fast as possible, and then we can keep working on second and third or adding additional modules, adding more enhancement to the customer, but uh, trying to give value and return to the customer as soon as possible will make it uh, much better for the customer and he will make it uh, very loyal to you. So my last uh, question, then uh, I'll see questions and I will see, uh, open it for the, our friends here. Is, is there also a relation between uh, Agile and something like uh, DevOps uh, development and operation continuous uh, integration continuous uh, yeah. development all this uh, buzzword related to uh, uh, somehow to software we are adapting it in network recently DevOps, yes I yes 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 Mohammed uh, I do believe that the DevOps is is one of the practices that embrace the agile uh, mindset as well. Um, the DevOps in, in a very in a very few words, it's the from development to operations. So the people who is developing the product and the people who who will receive the product after it's been developed and who work in the in the project as an operation team, these two guys or these two entities should collaborate in order to to to, to not just uh, throw a bomb, you know, sometimes the project uh, in the handover process, it's just like throwing a bomb to the to the operation team with the, with many issues, many outstanding issues. So this actually brings more frustration to the organizations. <clears throat> so in the whole process, who to, it, it stands for the handover to operation. We want this who to process to be smooth, to be um, uh, to have like a full picture, a full agreement between the, the development team and the operation team that we uh, we we can uh, we, we can now we you can now the team to hand over the, the project or the service because we are all on the same page. We understand the details of the project. We understand what the service or what what has been implemented uh, uh, for this. And we are ready to uh, to operation uh, process is one of the uh, of the main uh, most uh, you no know, uh, challenging uh, uh, processes in 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 many companies because uh, the process was to get rid of a bomb that can can be uh, can explode at any time so in order to narrow this gap to have a mutual understanding we need to sit together and and uh, and uh, two people the two entities should um, visualize everything and every step that has been done uh, in in the project in order to make a very smooth understandable handover yeah, uh, thank you Hassan for your time I uh, believe it was really uh, beneficial and informative session. Uh, before I hand over the mic to our colleagues here, uh, do you have something to close uh, this session? Anything to add? Or shall we open the floor for a few questions? No, no, no. Uh, no, Mohammed, I would like uh, to thank you so much for this, uh, for this host. Uh, so, yeah, again. Uh, it's, it's been very, very yeah, yeah. Uh, your, your voice is uh, dropping again, uh, Hassan, but I believe you're actually we uh, should i should and uh, our colleagues here we are thanking you for your time and uh, information that you gave to us 
Uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, still uh, fa facing difficulties in the voice, or you can you hear me? Hello, Hayson. Let's wait for Hassan to come back. Uh, we'll give him one minute. I can see Hayson uh, still there in the meeting session, but uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with his uh, audio. Yes, Mohammed. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, just want to, yeah, we can hear now. Well, I just want okay. to, uh, okay, thanks. on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you again uh, for your time and the great information and knowledge uh, that you shared with us all uh, today. We all really benefit from it. And we have a uh, few questions. I will start with the two questions received from Ahmed. And uh, maybe he actually requested to give him a very uh, straight, uh, direct, uh, short answer. Uh, he's wondering, he doesn't have any prior, uh, pre, uh, prior uh, programming experience, doesn't have any programming experience, how he can benefit from Agile in uh, the job uh, search? Um, how can he benefit from Agile in the job search? Yeah. Um, if if I may understand this question um, clearly, uh, you say so. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, think uh, if if Ahmed can can um, enable his mic and ask his question for me. But actually, I I don't uh, I don't understand the question clearly. Yeah, we'll let for Ahmed his second question. Uh, okay. Is agile an alternative for uh, PMP? <laughs> is agile what? An alternative, uh, alternative? No, no, no. Yeah, no, not not at all, not at all. Agile is, is complementing the the PMP. Uh, they are not uh, other alternatives yeah. for each other. Uh, you you need to have both uh, knowledges. You need to have both uh, uh, approaches in order to be a, a successful project manager. Great. Uh, my friend, uh, are we? Uh, he initially said he has one question, so maybe you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you, Mohammed and Python, for this good uh, knowledge sharing session. Uh, yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, I don't know if uh, I can ask all of them and try. So, uh, yeah. much about Scrum Daily Stand Up Meeting, and uh, we know that uh, in many organizations we, we tend to do, uh, we have mobility, and uh, many people who we will work from home or yeah, the team are not in the same location. So how is that handled with the Scrum? That's the first one. Should I ask the second or? Yes, yes, first? yes, please, Ariel, go ahead. Okay, so the next one, maybe from Hamid or both of you. Uh, 
MVP, the minimal viable product, uh, how in networking solution, uh, I like to put things in perspective. Uh, what will be a, an MVP? Is it like a POC? Is it like a demo or something else? The okay. second one and the third one, uh, the way we're doing networking solution today, as you know that we, we do like a HLD and we share with the customer, the customer validates, and we move to the next step, HLD, and uh, the next step and next step. Is that way of working agile? Or if it is not, how to make it agile? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ali. It's a really, really interesting question. So <laughs> I will leave you to answer uh, the first and third, and I will answer the second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, your question, uh, Ali, uh, uh, how we can do stand uh, up meeting virtually? Actually, uh, let's just face it that not all uh, uh, people or not all uh, uh, companies have uh, co-located teams. So most of us are working with virtual teams. Uh, like uh, for OBS, I have with with many people from all around the world. So how can we do this stand up meetings? How we can uh, overcome this challenge of, of of not being co-located. Actually, we do this uh, via uh, like a Skype for Business, WebEx, but be careful that this should be uh, a video call. And, and this is one of the uh, most important uh, agile principles is the face-to-face -face communication. I need to see you so we can have bond together and we can explain uh, what we want to say and the message will be uh, much clearer than that just a, a telephone call. Okay? <clears throat> can you guys so we, can, we can... I can't. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, for me, I can hear... Uh... Uh, Hi, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Okay. Let me uh, complete this answer. So, uh, in order to do this, we we can use a video collaboration tools like Skype for Business, like Webex, like Zoom video, uh, uh, so we can overcome this this challenge. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, Mohammed, for the second yeah. question. Yeah. Second question, uh, Alwi. Uh, for me, no. Uh, the MVP is not the book. Uh, the MVP should be something like a, an actual product for the customer with the minimum features. So if you consider, as example, a network project, if you have a big project which include uh, layer 3 VPN and the customer require uh, some quality of service, some uh, uh, voice over IP. So as a, as example, if you can start deliver to the customer at least the layer 3 VPN connectivity so he can have some uh, communication between his side, this is something like MVP. Then later on, you can add the quality of service, you can add the voice over IP or so on. So it's more like uh, uh, providing uh, value to the customer uh, uh, as soon as, as possible and with the uh, shortest uh, outcome. Uh, Third question it was regarding the documentation. So, Haysan, what do you think about developing all yeah. these documents and then? Uh, Mm. Is this an uh, agile way, yeah. or is there a way to enhance yeah, yeah. it? Yes, uh, yes. Okay, let me let me answer this question. Is that we we we're not in agile. We don't tend to uh, remove all uh, the documents or give in all the documents. We're not speaking about this. Uh, I believe that we need HLDs. Uh, I believe that we need uh, a design. We need to write the low level design, but it should be with the barely sufficient information that will. Uh, the drive a value to the customer and the documents can evolve uh, afterwards so it's not only about making one big uh, document at the beginning and i'm sure i'm sure believe me that this will change that uh, the, the, the this will not the the final ultimate uh, document that will be used until the end of the project so we need to minimize the documents to be barely sufficient which has the the basic the the the, the information that we will bring value to the customer for this for this particular stage or for this particular uh, sprint yeah maybe uh, Haysom, if i can add uh, Ali, uh, lately, a uh, couple of projects I worked on the last few years, even the customers start adapting this mentality. So I remember now in some of the projects we working on the LLD and we agreed with the customer this LLD we work on it in a chunks like phases 
and the customer agrees to give something they consider as a uh, uh, partial approval or something like that. So he approved this part of the LLD, so we can start implementing this part. And later on, while people start implementing, like, as example, the connectivity, on parallel, we'll start working on something else. And he will keep uh, give his con uh, conditional approval or partial approval uh, into a piece of a document. So this makes the, really makes the process very fast and uh, agile as well. Uh, I think we did we answer all your uh, questions, uh, Ali. Or is it yeah, fine? that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We have we have a couple of questions from Ahmed. We have a couple of guests today with Ahmed, so <laughs> they're not the same guy. First question: uh, He mentioned if he already has the PMP uh, knowledge and an ACP certificate. Will be, this be enough for him to work as a project, a good project management manager, or yeah. he need to be also certified uh, PMP? Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, for this question, I'm, uh, I'm always saying that you you need to have both knowledges. You need to have both uh, both approaches. You need to have both mindsets. So it's not only about selecting a PMP or or ACP. Even even in the in the big construction projects, um, and 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 uh, I may surprise you. When I tell you that I was part of the uh, of the of the instructors uh, at at Cairo, Cairo University, uh, the stru structure on construction uh, department, they they needed to know about uh, agile, and I was part of this uh, the mastering program in the construction engineering uh, department at the Cairo University, and I delivered the principles and how to adopt this uh, in, in in the market and in this field so you need both knowledges <clears throat> you need to have both the cert I'm always saying that the certificate is a good step the certificate uh, and when we speak about the agile certificates that would be the ACP certificates which is the most recognized um, certificate now in the market so the certificate is good it's but what is more important than the certificate is the mindset is the understanding so sometimes uh, some people when I'm when I do interviews for some people some people have the real mindsets and they have the knowledge they have uh, the application but they may not have the uh, certificate so for me they are accepted okay uh, but some other people that they have the certificates but they don't have the the hands-on experience they don't have the mindset even even they just um, study for the exam they did the exam and that's it. They didn't develop the, their skills after afterwards. So for me, the experience is very good. The certificate is is an added value, but mm. without the experience and the mindset, this would not work. Thank you, Hassan. That's why actually Ahmed came back with a related questions. I believe it's a really good one. Let's say he already certified and he's looking to have a hands-on experience. So he's asking. Is there uh, companies in Egypt and the Middle East that actually already working on this uh, agile? Is it easy yeah. for him to find such a company and start practicing what he learned? Yeah, let me, let me answer this question is yes, a big yes. A lot of a lot of companies in Egypt and even the local companies are adopting agile. I get a lot of, of, of uh, you know, uh, of questions. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, queries about Agile from many people uh, working in many different organizations, locally or multinational organizations. So I believe that uh, we have uh, we have big opportunity in Egypt, in the Middle East, to move towards Agile. We are still starting this. I believe that we we're not mature yet in, on on terms of the Agile transformation, but we started yet. We started this. Uh, I started this in my company. A lot of a lot of other people started uh, in the company. Company, uh, in other companies and I'm doing this I'm doing these courses uh, the agile courses to raise the awareness of agile and to make the people uh, know about the agile and realize the value of agile mindset and agile uh, approaches uh, so uh, yes go for it uh, uh, you can get the the, the knowledge uh, the certificates if you want and and if your company and this is very important Muhammad if your company doesn't adopt agile or doesn't work agile it's a mindset try to apply it even in your day-to-day -day activities 
you you don't uh, you don't uh, you don't need a, 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 a something from above or the top management to tell you go agile. You can do this even within your team on a small scale of your organization. Okay, who knows? Maybe other teams try to be influenced by your successes. So you can you can start doing this. You can start doing the Kanban. You can start doing thinking more uh, agile, uh, even if you um, in your day to day. Uh, activities. So Ahmed is asking if you can list a companies or adapt an uh, agile. Uh, um, actually, I cannot. <laughs> I, I don't have that, uh, you know, big memory to state the the the, uh, the companies. But a lot of banks uh, are doing this. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's not uh, uh, maybe the, not the local banks, but the Gulf banks even here in Egypt are doing this. I have I have few opportunities for Scrum Masters. Uh, in 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 banking, uh, they need. I know banks that need a scrum master, and they ask me to provide them uh, scrum master uh, candidates. Uh, the the most of the multinational organizations like Orange Business Services, Microsoft, uh, Dell, E and C. Um, uh, Google has no big existence in in Egypt, but if you're speaking about Vodafone, uh, it is a lot. Um, uh, orange, even Orange Mobile, not only Orange Business Services. So these companies definitely they started to adopt Agile, and also a lot of local uh, companies in the market, uh, especially uh, specialized in software development. Yeah, thank you again, uh, Hassan. Very solid answer. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, so well, you see, no. okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Hassan, Hassan, very much. I really like uh, the session, and uh, agile is a precious word. Even <laughs> my company, I started two years back, I decided to call it uh, agile IS. <laughs> because it was uh, yeah you have <laughs> and you have, you, have yeah, a vision. you have a vision Muhammad <laughs> <laughs> and because for network, for network project to be agile this was something like a, a big change so I said yeah let me be something like a leader in this market so this this world is, has some special <laughs> place in my heart. <laughs> Uh, thanks again. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, maybe in the future we'll have uh, more sessions talking about maybe about uh, agile principles and, and so on. Yes. And the yes. uh, floor is yours if you want to uh, sum it up. And uh, uh, okay, um, okay, Muhammad. Uh, so uh, to sum this this session up, it's uh, it's all about agile is a mindset. Agile is not only for software development projects. Agile is a way of being and thinking. Um, uh, Agile, as, as I mentioned, it's a mindset, but you, you don't have also uh, to, to, to forget about the other approaches, even the waterfall approaches. Uh, you need to adopt Agile in, in any and all kinds of, of projects and at, at all kinds of your even day-to-day -day activities. Um, simply be Agile. Actually, that's my slogan. It's simply be Agile. Thanks again, and uh, all the best uh, in your career, guys. And uh, don't worry, we already recorded this session, uh, session and hope within this week uh, you will uh, see the recording uh, on the YouTube channel. Thanks again, and uh, have a good day. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye.